So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is the 29th of April. Just one more day in April of 2021. Our topic tonight is the journey to oneness. So um, this whole month of April, I've been talking about oneness. The theme is oneness. And um, last week, we talked about the, the, the seven stages of consciousness expansion in this universe. And most importantly, just to recap, is that we are in the process of graduating from third dimension or third density, and we are moving on to the next step of of our evolution, of the evolution of our consciousness. So everyone that is on this planet Earth um, is moving on. Um, Well, not not everybody, but um, whether we choose to move on to third dimension, uh, from third dimension to the fifth dimension, or whether we choose to not move forward, um, it's... The, the planet Earth itself has chosen to move into the fifth dimension. So everyone has to either move with her or move to another playground. So everybody has to, in one way or another, make a choice to go with Mother Earth or, or to go to a different planet. So that is what is happening right now. And this is a big step. This is a big step in the evolution of our consciousness. And three, the third dimension is is the most challenging stage of um, the evolution of our soul because in third dimension, that's when we we actually um, have to make a choice, make a choice to whether we want to move into the next dimension, the, the, the next step of our evolution of our consciousness in the positive polarity or in the negative polarity. So that's why in this, this third dimension, what we need to do the, the, in order to graduate is really to get to the point where we can, um, we have self-awareness. We are aware of who we are. We have we have aware of who who we are, and then we can make a choice. The choice is: do does our soul actually want to move into the next step in the positive or in the negative polarity? Neither one is is the right one it is uh, i would say it's there's no one choice that is the right one in terms of consciousness whether positively um, polarized or negatively polarized it is um, both choices are just as valid the importance is, is to is to transition to the next step to move on to the next step um so that's why this there's so many obstacles, there's so many ways, there's so many um, different events coming up for us to, to make that choice, to become aware of who we are, to actually wake up, to know that we are separate from the, 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 the collective consciousness that we need to, that we have to be aware of ourselves, of our separate will, and then use that will to choose a polarity. And I think I probably speak for for most people that it hasn't been an easy journey so far. However, the the good news is that we we all um, made it this far. We're just at the the transition period um, uh, at a soul level we already made our choice so we are now just witnessing what what is going to how we're going to move and morph into the next um, step of our evolution and compare it to the the third dimension 
our next step, the next phase of evolution, of our evolution is, is really going to look like heaven because we are going into the next, um, whether we want to go by the, the density, which we will be moving into the fourth density, or if we want to use the dimension, then we are moving into the fifth dimension. However, they, they are really kind of similar um, in that we are actually um, moving into the next step. And the, the next step is, it's really about developing our heart chakra. To, to, we are going to, in the next step of our evolution, to learn a lot more about love and oneness. So love, like in the fifth dimension, we, we're going to learn a lot more about love oneness and also service to others for the positive polarity. So um, since um, I think most of us here are more likely than not to move into the, the, the positive polarity. So I'm going to focus on talking about the, the, the fifth dimension in the positive polarity. So love is the most powerful, pervasive force in the universe. It is not that we don't know anything about love. Even in third dimension, um, we, we have some experience of love. I say some because um, all of our experience of love is really from a... Uh, third dimension, sometimes maybe even second dimension level of understanding of love, what love is. We, even though we we have experience of certain kind of love, but the most of the time the 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 level of love that we um, are familiar with is really about conditional love which is I will love you if you, um, if you can fulfill a set of requirements that, that I need for you to do for me. So I will love you if you, if you satisfy like these requirements. So that is really very conditional love. And, um, and it is a good beginning. I'm not saying that you know can, there's anything wrong with conditional love. Nothing is wrong with it. It is a good beginning. However, it is just the beginning, though. There is love is actually such a big topic. It's something that, um, if you think of it, like source itself, is is the the essence of source of the creator source itself is love. So. That's what I mean by love is a big topic because we know we don't really know much about what the creator source, what the essence of the creator source is. We we have um, we have some concept of what God is, but our understanding of God of this this concept of God is actually really understanding from our um, third dimension level of understanding the creator source God or or some other whatever name you want to give to that that concept of this creator being is something that we know very little of even though we have a name for it that does not mean that that we actually understand what the source what the creator source is and love is the essence of source. So, um, and love is the basis of oneness. So to know love, to really understand the full extent of what love is, and I'm talking about um, like love as in all of love, not just, not just, um, conditional love, but unconditional love, and, and also above that as well. 
because there are what well, our understanding of love is so um, limited. So to know love really is to know ourselves, and to know ourselves is really to know what love is, and to know what um, the creative source and God is. So the aim of this app, of this episode, this podcast, is actually to introduce some exercises or and or processes that may assist you in um, growing your consciousness and these are some of the exercises that um i wouldn't say that i'm i I have mastered them like i I certainly have tried some of them and started to 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 use some of them and I find that they they actually helped me help myself in growing my consciousness, and um, I I know some about some of these exercises and some of them I actually just uh, recently um, discovered more when I started reading the 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 law of one material. I don't know whether you any of you have heard about the law of one material. Um, the law of one is actually a um, was something that was channeled by a group of three people. There is the the channeler. I think Carla um, is her name, and then there uh, there is a scribe who actually um, did all of the 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 um, just scribing it, and then there is also the questioner because when the when the the person is being asked when the channeler was being asked a certain question, then the channeler actually color um, channeled the answer from an entity who called itself. I I wouldn't say himself or herself because it's the these beings is really from a much higher. Um, density. I, th- I forgot. I think it's a sixth density, which is, so, so it's a seventh is the highest. Is That's where the highest of um, the consciousness, which really goes back into, so the seventh density is really going back into oneness. So six is just one below that. So pretty high because we are just um, from third going to fourth. So we are halfway there and it takes millions of years to to move up any of these densities so this this consciousness who called itself Ra is really a like at least maybe a billion in terms of um, consciousness is is a billion years beyond our current experience so it's really a a much higher um, level of consciousness than than we are at and so the reason why the law of the Ra came to, to channel these, these messages uh, through these three people was because um, Ra actually, I think maybe about 10,000 or 12,000 years ago, was working with um, people on earth um, at the time of the Egyptian as so well. Or, so, so Ra is, is a consciousness that has been working with various stages of the, the evolution of consciousness on Earth. The last time Ra was here, um, some of his, his teachings were distorted, um, really um, twisted in a way that actually served the, the, the people that um, actually did the distortion. So that's why Ra, after these thousands of years, decided to to, um, seek out another um, group of people to channel his message uh, from the law of one again, in order to hopefully correct some of the distortion that was done 
somehow that was that was done for um, about his the teaching. So that's what the law of one material is about. And <laughs> the law of one material is um, I highly recommend everybody if you're interested to take a look at it. It's um, it's free on it's free online to download. You can actually um, download the PDFs and you can also download the, um, the, the recording of the sessions itself. So you can actually hear Carla's um, voice. Um, you can actually hear, I think Jim was the person who, who um, was the person questioning, do, uh, giving the questions. So each time they, there, there's been over 106 sessions all together so um and they did a session maybe about a week to 10 days apart so that they can prepare like really come up with questions the the meaningful questions to ask so it's it's a very well thought out um set of metaphysical um, teaching that was co-created by these three people, three human beings who dedicated their, their, um, a lot of their time in doing this kind of channeling and research on consciousness and also co-created with the entity Ra. So I highly recommend if you're interested in this at all is to go listen to the the, the original um, messages and also to to look at the text yourself and here I I use the the, the law of one material just to for um, to pick out these exercises a few of these exercises which were mentioned when uh, I think one of the sessions when they asked Ra, so, so what is, what, is there anything that's going to help us in order to um, grow our consciousness faster? So these are a few of the suggestions that, that Ra made in order to, to really guide us. So, but before I give the exercises, I, I actually want to to talk a little bit about the the principles that like the exercises are based on a few very uh, just just three principles. Um, okay, maybe more than three, but a few a handful of principles. So if you understand these principles, then it's these exercises would, you can actually come up with other exercises that according to your own, um, according to what suits you best, but these are the principles. So the first principle is really to, to know thyself. I know we, this is not a new idea. Know thyself is really something that that we all know of even beyond the, the, the law of one material. The first principle, know thyself. Because we, each and every one of us, with a, each and every one of us, whether we are um, awake or not, we are here to explore our truth. Um, we may not be consciously seeking but even when we are not consciously seeking we are still seeking on some level so each of us are here to explore the the truth as we experience it and as, as we experience it on this planet because um our consciousness is really based on experience. So we, we can, we may be able to read something and get an idea, maybe get an understanding, but it is when we actually experience it ourselves, that's when we actually can embody those, those ideas and concepts 
at a much deeper level. So um, when we start to, instead of unconsciously seeking to know ourselves, to let that process become more conscious than this, we are actually taking the, the, the next step into evolving our own um, consciousness. So that's why the first principle of evolving our consciousness is really to, to know thyself, to, to actively participate and consciously participate in getting to know ourselves. So that really is what that means. And of course, the second principle kind of um, is, is the next step when we, so we first we actively participate in getting to know ourselves. And then um, the second principle is really to accept ourselves. Mm, why, why do we, so when we first is to know ourselves and when we start to look invariably, we will start to find things that we don't like about ourselves. Um, much of our, I would say, zombie life, zombie kind of, of um, existence, meaning zombie as in not awakened yet. Uh, most of our zombie-like mm -hmm. existence is really to avoid knowing about ourselves. We do so many things to occupy ourselves. We, we watch movies, we go play football, we you know, do lots of things to, to distract ourselves from looking at ourselves. So when we start to look at ourselves, consciously choose to look at ourselves, we invariably will find something that we don't like. We may be able to discover that, oh, um, that person, you know, kicked me because I actually did something wrong first. That's why that person reacted to me. So then we start to um, see our own faults. And so the second principle is really when we see things that we don't like about ourselves, when we start to be able to see our own shadow parts, then the next um, step of it is really to accept ourselves because we are not, the, the, the point of getting to know ourselves is not really to judge. Huh, I find something out about you that is not good so i'm going to um you know rub your nose in it forever that's not what we are here to do we are here to get to know ourselves and the next thing the next step is to accept what it is within ourselves that we don't like and so that's the second that's the second um, principle we are after all, um, a unique aspect of source, each and every one of us are unique. And if we are here alive, that means source itself has um, made a conscious choice that you are needed, that each and every one of us here are needed in order for the whole collective to, as a group, explore consciousness together. So each and every one of us is, is, instrument, is instrumental. And the, the more you accept yourself, you also allow the, the, the light of source, the, the essence of source, to be able to flow through you. And the more you resist yourself, you're actually resisting the, the, the flow of source, the essence of source to, to be able to flow through you. 
So that's why acceptance, self-acceptance is the second principle and very important principle as well. And of course, the last principle, the third principle is that you are the creator. Whether you accept the fact that you are a creator or not, you are the creator of your reality. Each and every one of us creates our own reality and we we co-create and play with each other to create the reality together. However, the reality that we each experience, we can only experience our own reality. So we are indeed the the creator of our own universe. Let's put it that way. So these are the three guiding principles. And so now I'm going to start to go on to um, talking about some of the exercises that um, Ra has suggested. So the first, first exercise that Ra has suggested to, in order to assist us in moving the, or, or hastening and making it easier for us, the more efficient for us to grow our consciousness. The first one is to see love and perfection in every moment. And I actually want to unpack this um, a bit more, is that um, each and every moment that we experience is something that we as the creator create have created for us, for ourselves to experience. And what Ra, what this exercise that Ra has, um, has suggested for us is, is for us to find, because some moments are easier to experience the love and the perfection in it, whereas a lot of moments are not as easy. Usually when we are very triggered by what's happening around us, to us and around us. So those are the, the, the things that we, those are the moments that it's, it's very challenging for us to see the love and the perfection of it. However, it is precisely in these challenging moments that's when we um, can start to use those, those challenging moments in order to in order to, um, what's the word for it? In, it's in order to kind of supercharge our rate of growing our consciousness is that we make a conscious choice to see the intention of love and perfection behind each moment. Some moments, it's very easy because when, for example, when I when I go to um, the beach and really be able to enjoy sunshine and and the, the the sound of waves, it is very easy to to see the love and the perfection of the moment. However, when when let's say we um, start to go to Walmart and then see something like these items that um, for us, we feel as being essential, whereas, however, um, it's now somehow deemed to be non-essential. So it's moments like these, that's actually the moments that is most important for us to find the love and perfection of that moment. So, um, so how do we do that is we, we do processing. So we process our emotions. We process why we got triggered. And um, we, we process what are the, the belief systems that's being infringed upon. How are, how are we being, um, our beliefs is now being, 
while boundaries are being crossed, are being um, tested by events that's happening seemingly out of our control. However, that's just an illusion. We are the one, we are actually the, the person, the one that created these realities for ourselves to experience in order to um, trigger us. And it is in that trigger that we can start to look at the, the things that we, we don't normally look at. Um, things, so it's when we are triggered and we take the time to find the, the, the perfection and the love of the moment, to really disentangle all the, the emotions and the, the, the underlying beliefs that we are not consciously aware of. It's, but it's still there, those, those um, unconscious beliefs. It is when we are triggered, that's when we get a chance, a very powerful um, catalyst of opportunity for us to go in our own unconscious mind and to pull out the um, unconscious material, the things within ourselves that we don't normally take time to look at. So this is what the exercise is about, is to, is to go in the deep dive into, to start to look at and pull up all the things or the beliefs or the emotions or the all of those things that is has always been there it's just that when we don't look at it when we don't feel triggered we have no idea that they are there so that that really introduced the the, the concept of doing shadow work and I actually just want to um, sect way a little to talk a little bit about how to do shadow work, how to do process, how to process these emotions, how to process these beliefs that um, have us feeling that we are powerless, feeling that we are a victim, feeling that somehow we've been violated. So the um, I, in previous episodes, I've talked about how to do processes. I actually want to um, be a, even a little bit more um, clear in what these process entails. So doing shadow work, doing these processes, there are, there are actually at least two ways of doing them. I call them the masculine and the feminine method. So the masculine method is, um, <laughs> is actually what um, <clears throat> uh, Franco has, has been teaching us, is Franco always teach us, is that we um, write it out. So when we get triggered, we write out all the, <clears throat> all the, um, all the, the conversations in our head, we write it out first. So, and then we start to drill down. So what are the beliefs that have us feeling this way? Then we, we write all of those down. So when we write it out, we actually, um, we are trying to understand why we feel the way we feel. So this is what the masculine method is about. It's about understanding. It's about um, using our, um, I would say, more logical mind to look at it, to understand something, to list everything out, to write everything out so that we can go back and um, each time when we when we get triggered again, then we can actually go back and put down more things that we have uncovered. So it is really a, sh uh, a shining the light in the, the, the shadow 
conversations that's always been there in our mind. It's just that a lot of the times we feel the emotions without even being conscious of all the 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 stories that we have made up in our mind, and we have just forgotten that we have these stories. So the masculine way of processing is to put all of those um, stories that we have forgotten, all of those um, beliefs, all of those the judgments that we have from past events, how we came to the conclusion that this sucks and I feel angry about it. So, so behind the anger, behind the, the, the sadness or whatever emotions that you're feeling, what is the story behind it? Because once we understand it, once we understand all of those things, then we can start to deconstruct it. We can start to say, oh, this is something that happened at a time, let's say, for example, um, I think one of the, the, the easiest example we can relate is when we feel that um, as, as an elephant, as a, a small elephant is very easily um, to be just you just the highest string around this, this small elephant and you would be able to um, discipline and be able to control. So when we were young as well, we were told that you have to obey authorities. However, this, this, this belief has been anchored in our unconscious mind. That's why when we see the quote unquote authorities telling us something that does not make sense to us, we have this, sense of being so um, frustration coming up is because we still have that part of that belief is that we have to listen to authority but 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 we don't agree with those authorities so there's this internal conflict but the internal conflict has to come up for us to see that oh that was we were taught at a young age to to listen to authority. However, we are old now, we are old enough now, we can make up our mind what is what it is that we um, would agree to, 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 to listen to and what it is that we disagree and we're gonna take action in order to um, throw all that back into the, the, the face of authority because it's really just um, quote unquote authority. It's not real authority. We are the only one that has the real authority, not someone outside of us. So we, because we um, were with these, some of these, these limiting beliefs was layered in there in our unconscious mind for such a long time. So now when we start to bring all of this up, start to start to process it, then we can start to deconstruct and be able to recover and um, empower ourselves again. So that's the, the masculine way of doing the processing. And then there is also the feminine way of doing the processing. The feminine way is really observation, observing something and it is, I, I, so I, um, I, I do believe that um, Frank West mentions some of this as well. However, the one that um, the one process that that is it's really from Enelia Benz that I really resonate with in terms of the the feminine method is to really just um, observe something observe something without any judgment at all. Just observe. And I think Sifu James also did that with us as well, is to, when we go into wholeness, um, in order to do any healing, actually a lot of the times we just observe. 
we just, let's say we have a pain in our body. If we want to heal it, we just put it in our, our um, in the middle of our brain, get to a level of consciousness that is much higher and more um, and, and more uh, much closer to being um, beyond the body because when we when we think that we are the body then we are at the level of the problem of the creation of the problem however when we when our consciousness is beyond the body then we at the level where we are above the level of where the the problem originates that's when we can start to simply observe we don't have to do anything we simply observe because at a the highest level we are simply light and love so just by ob observation we actually the the light and love itself is the healing energy that's going to shift the um, whatever event or whatever um, bodily sensation or bodily function that we are trying to observe will start to transform that which we are observing. So that is what the feminine method is about. The feminine method is really to go into the depth of this and simply to observe it. You may feel some emotions coming up. However, when you stop, when you, when you don't judge anything, when you have no, um, stories when you have no no nothing against or for something then you invariably is already transforming it so that is the feminine method of of um, process of, of shadow work of doing shadow work and um, which way to use which method to use I, I would actually suggest to use the masculine method first um, because it is easier. Um, the feminine method of just observation, it really um, it's more helpful or I should say it's more useful when you when you already have some idea of what, uh, when you have done some of the, 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 the understanding, then the feminine method actually will work easier, faster. So I would suggest trying the, the, the masculine method first and then switch to feminine method. There is no one right way to do it. Some, sometimes it is easier to understand something and logically um, drill down. And sometimes it's not. So it really is depends on the person, depends on the, the situation. However, these are two of the most powerful way of processing your own shadow of, of doing any kind of shadow work. So just, so that's, so when you, when you're doing the first exercise of seeing the love and perfection in every moment, and when you come across something that, or some situation that you simply cannot comprehend what's the love and the perfection in this, then you may want to use some of these, either the masculine or the feminine method to start to shift what comes up for you that makes it 
heart for you to see the love and the perfection in the moment. So, so let's continue on to the second exercise that Ra has suggested. <clears throat> the second exercise is, oh, okay, I actually just want to, to um, throw in is that um, you may want to do this as an exercise, like try that once or twice a week at first and see how easy or hard it is. And, and the more you do it, you, you can actually start to increase it so that, you know, um, every day all the time you ask yourself, the question is, you ask yourself is, are you seeing the love and the perfection in this moment? And so, so that's, that's my suggestion for that is, um, there may be days when, you know, it's so many things are happening that you don't have time to, to do this. However, at least once or twice a week, give yourself time to, or especially when you feel you are triggered, then definitely give yourself the room and the space to do this, to allow yourself to see the love and the perfection in exactly the moment that you find most challenging. So the next exercise that Ra has suggested is, is to see the creator in everyone that you meet. So it's, it's really when you meet someone, whether it's someone you know or someone new that you have, you have no idea who they are, is no matter who it is that you meet, is to remind yourself this person that we meet, that I'm meeting, whether this person may be your child, your partner, your parent, or someone off the street that you have no, you have no idea what their story, what their backstory is, is to just repeat that in the back of your mind is that this person is also a creator, just like me, is also a creator. So start to repeat this to yourself, remind yourself, and if any, um, any any emotions comes up. For example, you know, that person could be a, could be somebody who um, is, let's say the, the person who um, tells you you have to wear a mask. Then you may have some, you know, emotions coming up when you remind yourself that this person too is an aspect of the creator, just like me. And then if any emotions or judgments and stories comes up, then you process those. So you have this practice is everyone you meet, you look at them as though you are looking into a creator, the, the, the creator source himself. So that is one of the exercises. And I actually, um, I've done this exercise, but not very consistently, I have to say. I, I definitely have not um, been doing most, like exercise one is, is fairly new to me. Um, exercise two, every now, like I, I've been doing, or at least, um, when I, whenever I remember, I would do that. So, so that is something that definitely, if you do this consistently for a couple of months or maybe even a year or perhaps even longer, see the difference. You, you would really start to know the difference within your, yourself, how you... Um, because it is the truth. Every one of us, everyone, whether they are, whether you think they're worthy or not, 
they are another aspect of the creator. So, and so then um, this exercise will definitely assist you in growing your consciousness even faster. And then the next exercise, the third one, is something that I've done before, um, have not really done it very too consistently, I have to say, but you know, this one is, is to see the creator as you look into a mirror. So instead of looking at someone and, and, and saying to yourself that this person is an aspect of the creator source, is when you look into the mirror, say this to yourself, that when you see yourself, see the creator in yourself as well, in the mirror. Um, yeah, this is a scary exercise as well. I've done it before and um, I don't do it very often. So <clears throat> yes, I would definitely um, attempt more of this. And then last but not least, the, the fourth exercise that um, Ra gave us is that is to see everything around you as part of the creator as well. Meaning that it's not just the human beings, it's to see um, your table, to see your laptop, to see a cup of tea, to see uh, a plant, to see your pet, or um, like, or the sea, or the sky, to see that as everything, as a part of the creator as well. So um, this is a new exercise for me. Um, I actually just came across this just from reading the, the Law of One. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I, I have done this exercise too often. Maybe I've done it once or twice. So, <clears throat> so these are four of the exercises that um, Ra has suggested. And, and I think if we, if we start to practice these four, or maybe even pick one or two of them and start to do them and in a consistent on a consistent basis you and also start to process any um, any emotions any any frustrations any any pushback any um, resistance to to process those and really look into those parts that's and also doing the, the shadow work that comes with these exercises, then these four would, just these four, you don't really need, you know, 10 different exercises. Just do these few of these consistently. And it would be very useful. That's, that's what I have found. Um, one more note is that the, the foundation of all of these, the, the reason why we want um, Ra has suggested these exercises and also to suggest that we do the, the, um, the necessary shadow work that comes with these exercises is, the, um, is one of the, the, the ways of doing these is really to to take time out of our busy day because we can't really do these exercises um, very well if we are, you know, in the middle of, um, <clears throat> let's say, doing grocery or, or um, um, you know, going to do a protest, um, doing a, a, a long rally, taking part in a rally or doing other things. Um, is that these exercises requires us to take time out and to be in a more solitary and quiet moment 
when we process the the when we do process of any shadow work it is when we take time out of our busy lives the lives that we have created it to be so busy in order to distract us from getting to know ourselves it is when we take that time to devote to ourselves to get to know ourselves get to see our own shadow and to accept our own shadow and to really acknowledge the perfection and the love behind all of our creations that is when we start to um, ground all this in it's very tough to embody the the growth and and be able to 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 grow our consciousness if we are constantly go 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 do 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 it's in the being is in the um looking inward and being able to stop and 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 process what why we, are we doing what we are doing is when we when we take time for these more meditative and contemplation time that's when we can grow our consciousness more so i just want to recap very um very sh shortly of the four exercises of the the two like just just very quick recap is um three principles the first one is the principle one is to know ourselves know ourselves to accept ourselves and also that we are the creator that we are the creator of everything and the four exercises that Ra has suggested is the first one is to see love and perfection in every moment and the second exercise is to see the creator in everyone you meet the third one third exercise is to see the creator as you look into the mirror and the fourth one is see everything around you as part of creation as well and the last thing is to really take time to process all of these um to know yourself better is to really be a be willing to spend the time whether it is in meditation it could be in prayer it could be just being quiet so it is really in in taking time to be with yourself that you get the most benefit from these and in terms of the processes there is the masculine way and the feminine way of processing masculine is about understanding and the feminine way is about feeling is about really moving through the the um, the emotions that you feel moving through the energies rather than um and so it's about feeling versus understanding um, not versus there's no versus it's just they are both of them are, uh, are valid ways to process um, your shadow process any emotions or limiting beliefs that comes up is to understand them and then um, find a, a better way of handling a similar situation and then the next one is the the feminine way is to really 
allow those emotions, allow those energies to be fully expressed, to be fully embodied. When the energy is fully expressed and embodied, they just change, transform. They no longer have the same potency as before because all of these are simply um, a distortion, a misunderstanding. And when you allow the, that, that illusion to, to move through you, then it will transform all on its own. So that's all I have to say today. <laughs>